We, we are here in uh, Villamora for the European uh, Championship. Uh, today is going to be the first day. We, we had a very good uh, result uh, of the warm-up regatta uh, last, uh, last week. And uh, yeah, we we're super stoked finishing first. Happy to be here and begin the first day. Yeah, we've had uh, quite a bit of training here since uh, quite early after the wars. We trained here with uh, our Uruguayan friends as well as the Panans and also Josh and Nilo from the Swiss team. And yeah, we had some really nice conditions, uh, but this week it's really light. So yeah, it will be super interesting to see how it goes and maybe some tight racing. Uh, we are in the first day of the Europeans. We've been waiting for the win, but finally it's coming, so ready for it. It was light on day one of the 2023 49er, 49er FX, and NACRA 17 European Championships. There were only two races in the 49er FX fleet, and only one race in the three 49er fleets and the NACRA 17 fleet. In the 49er FX, the Italian pair of Germani and Bertucci lead on top, and then races were run in the three 49er fleets by New Zealand, Spain, and Swiss fleets. In the NACRA 17, the only race of the day were won by the British pair of Gimson and Burnett. There are plenty more races to go for the rest of the week, leading up to the medal race on Monday. Uh, my name is William McKenzie. I'm Isaac McCarty. We're from New Zealand and we're here sailing the uh, 49er. Today we had just one race in extreme light conditions. Um, we were lucky enough to get a good start and just find some space really and um, managed to keep most of the bus behind us. So very lucky to get away. Um, unscathed so very happy yeah it's it's part of our um, olympic qualification um series for back at home so um it's an important event for us yeah Uh, today was a short day, we did only one race uh, in light wind and uh, we came third in that race which is good but it's, it's only the beginning of the regatta, there's still a long way to go. Uh, but yeah, we're happy with how we sailed and uh, we're looking forward to the next few days. Hi, I'm Georgia. I'm Jana, and we are here at the first day of the European Championship. Today the wind was uh, really lighter. Uh, we managed to win two races, and uh, we are really happy. The starts were really okay, and also the speed. So we managed to do uh, good results. We are happy, but it's just the first day. And uh, we are the Mama team <laughs> from France. <laughs> from France. Uh, today we had a quite good day of light condition. It was the beginning of the European Championships. So we wanted to uh, to have some good start, good starts, good speeds, and to enjoy the day. And I think that we are really happy about the plan what we made. Yeah, well, it, it was a it was a good day for us to begin like this. It's uh, okay. The regatta will be long, 
but uh, when you start like this, it's, uh, we have to take it and enjoy the, the performance of today and be focused for the next day. We want to prove to ourselves be, be, for the first uh, things, it's to be confident that we can do something. So we enjoy to, to race in the front of the fleet today and we'll see uh, after. <laughs> We're on day two of the European Championship in Villamora. Yesterday we did two races in light and slightly tricky conditions. When we're really ready for day two, we we're gonna have a little bit more wind. Well, we're wrapping up day two at the 2023 49er, 49er FX, and NACRA 17 European Championships here in Villamora on the Atlantic Ocean. Andy, how'd the 49ers go today? 49ers, well, second day of qualifying for the three groups. And in the lead, it's the young New Zealanders, Isaac McCarty and William McKenzie, that are leading overall ahead of two Austrian teams in second and third, so really tight there. Also, we see the reigning world champions from the Netherlands. Um, they have risen up to fifth place, but all super tight on the scores right now. And on the NACRAs, I think one of the biggest things here, there was a little bit of a change. It was a little bit light yesterday. And uh, Ugolini and Duvalle from Italy, you know, real standouts. They've been second at the World Championships, and then they were leading going into today. And they had a great start to their day, but the breeze came up. It was non-foiling yesterday. Foiling today, Gimson and Burnett from, from Great Britain uh, finally rose to the top by the end of the series today. So, uh, you know, as we see, sometimes it's, you know, as the conditions change, the competitors, you know, some rise to the top, some fall with it. But it's so tight at the top of that fleet, it's going to be hard to tell. It was a um, nice day, uh, more wind than yesterday, so quite more funny. And uh, we had a nice day, not really easy. So we had uh, two nice races and two not very nice, but it's a long week. So we're happy with the day. I think uh, we managed to to have a good day. So it's the, just the second day. No, questa taglia la dai. It's uh, only the second. Eh, uh, don't uh, It's only the second day, so we are happy to be in first position and look forward to next days. And the breeze picked up later on in the day, so it's really soft for the 49ers uh, in the earlier session. But the FX is in the afternoon. Well, they're still finishing behind us right now, and we're, we're just 10 minutes away from sunset as, as we speak. Um, and maybe it's that change of conditions that brings the Swedes back up. The reigning world champions in, in the FX, Bobek and Netzler, had a pretty awful start to the racing yesterday. But uh, as, as we speak, they were getting second in the final race to go with the first and second, lifting the Swedes way up. Yeah, it was good. We continued with the good starts and we were a bit sharper on the tactics today, which helped. So we could actually maybe even gain boats around the marks and not lose them. Yeah, yeah. I think the results look a lot worse than what it felt from within the boat because we did a lot of good stuff yesterday. We just finished up with a lot of not so good stuff uh, as well. Uh, but today we really got back into the race mode again and uh, yeah, especially around uh, the marks and making smart decisions around the course was a bit smoother today. So yeah, we're, we're happy. We're third and second last year, uh, like with the Open Europeans and with the Europeans. So of course we would like to win the title 
but I'm not sure. Like we have a long <laughs> week ahead, and we have yesterday with us in the bag, so we just need we have like what do you say? We have to be very sharp. Yeah, to it's, continue from here. We just keep on taking one race at a time, and then see where that puts us at the end of the week. But um, yeah, we're just happy to be back racing. But meanwhile, still leading the Italians, Jana Germani and Giorgia Pozzuzzi, still leading overall in the FX. And it's still early on in the regatta, like you said, we're in the qualifying rounds. And But what do we have to look forward to once we get into the championship rounds and where does everyone come to watch the action? Well, it's the final day of qualifying tomorrow before we get into the Gold Fleet. It's a rehearsal day for you and me <laughs> tomorrow because the final three days we have live streaming of all the action here in Villamora for the 49er, 49er FX and NACRA 17 European Championship. So do tune in to watch me and Chris bring you all the action for the final three days. Uh, it was a tough year and we just tried to see race by race and I think today we also got a, a bit uh, a luck back maybe let's say. We're just happy um, that we came away with a couple of good races today. It's still the beginning of the of the regatta so a lot can happen but uh, yeah ha happy with today's performance. And Benjamin the other Austrian team you're doing really well they're doing slightly better so um, what, what are you guys drinking is it is it the Red Bull or something else? <laughs> no no we are uh, drinking Pana juices um, so that's even bringing more power. Um, but yeah, I think we just uh, didn't have the best winter and uh, made some changes now after the Worlds. And we are yeah, finding obviously a bit of a rhythm. Uh, but on the other hand, I think today was a lot about just getting the wind right, reading the wind. And um, it's still uh, the main part of the regatta is coming once golf is on. We will see who is really strong here. And um, yeah, but it's good to be not losing too many points now. and. Uh, yeah, just getting good into this week. Day three of the Europeans and in the FX, it's Jana Germani and Giorgio Patizzi from Italy who hold the lead, which also means that they are leading in the battles to get that one spot for the Olympics that's available from this event to go through to Paris 2024. Um, it was a tricky day, I, th I guess for all the teams, but it was like we had really light conditions, um, which made the races quite tricky, especially because if you didn't have a good start, then the chances to do a good comeback was a bit hard. Um, so yeah, we're taking a lot of learnings from today and hopefully tomorrow we can put it on the table and get better results. Well, I think that we are happy because we are already being selected, but for us it's a really good training, but also we are competitors, so we are here for fighting, that is yeah. uh, the thing that we love. So yeah, it's a really good training for us. I think that now there are uh, a lot of European team working for the sport, I think that uh, it's really hard for them, so try to help as much as yeah. we can, but, but yes, it's really nice to be here. In the men's 49er, Benjamin Beldstein and David Hussel from Austria, they haven't had a great season in 2023, but they're making amends now. They are leading overall in a fleet with more than 90 boats in it. And as for the battle for that one Olympic spot up for grabs, currently it's the Belgians, Yannick Lefebvre and Jan Hörnink who are holding the lead there, but there are others waiting in the wings like Ireland, Italy, looking to get back on the Belgians. And there's still plenty of racing to go at this stage in the competition. And then in the NACRA 17, well, we should be getting used to these young Italians leading. They are just getting better and better. And it's Uglini and Jubile who hold the top spot for Italy ahead of Britain's John Gimpson and Anna Burnett. And as for that battle for Olympic qualification, it's the Austrians, Hebel and Frank, who hold the top spot at the moment.
Colin and Gary racing the 49er for Great Britain. What brings you here? Because this is serious professional stuff. Well, breaking 50 years old, you know, I could have gone out and bought a Porsche, I'd be midlife crisis, but stuff like that, let's go and chase the Olympic uh, hopefuls, you know, the European Championships. You know, Gary and I practice a club back at home and uh, we have a couple of juniors there sailing, that's about it. So we train with them and do our best and thought we'd just come down and have a bit of fun. And Gary, it's a tough gig at the front of these boats. I mean, there, there are some crews younger than you here. How, how are you coping this, with the front end? Uh, yeah, naproxen is the key we've been finding. <laughs> Plenty of painkillers. Other painkillers are available, but that's that's your weapon of choice. Okay. It is pretty much our weapon of choice. We've been popping them since we left left the UK in, in preparation. Our expectations, hope to try not to come last. Try and get a, a moment the glory. At one point, we're tracking with fifth yesterday. Like, right, girls, how did it go on? <laughs> we got high fived at, um, what's it called? Registration just for turning up. It's like, right, it's everybody fucking loves us. Well, we're like, like Eddie the Eagle, aren't we? You know? <laughs> yeah, well, you could, I mean, the trials have yet to start for GB. Oh, no, they haven't. No, you're, you're too yeah, late. Yeah, no, that's been there. taken. Yeah. Anyway, Colin and Gary, great to see you here and keep up the good work. And may you not finish last this week because that will be a victory for all weekend warriors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Benjamin Bildstein and David Hussel currently holding the lead by just a single point from the Polish team of Dominik Buksak and Simon Wyszbicki. It's just the beginning of, uh, of the regatta, let's say, because uh, gold fleet racing is when everything is decided, so we are just focusing on what's ahead of us. I think we are getting used to because of the past three days, but uh, usually we prefer a bit, a bit uh, more breeze. But uh, anyway, we are doing quite good in this very light conditions so far. Getting ready for the first bit of Gold Fleet racing in the 49er. This is the European Championships for the 49er, the 49er FX, and the NACRA 17 classes. So we got three Olympic classes. This is away. Gold Fleet means um, only the top 25 out of a total of uh, 93 entries in the in the men's fleet. So we've whittled down from 93 down to uh, the the best 25. Um, and there have been some big name casualties that haven't made it through to the final 25 which is always the way in Olympic class racing. Day four of the Europeans and Ugolini and Jubile, the young Italians continue to hold on to the lead after two more races in the NACRA 17. They're still being chased by John Gimson and Anna Burnett from Great Britain in second and in third place those reigning world and European champions. Tita and Banti, also from Italy, but running out of road to be able to overtake their younger rivals for Olympic selection. Okay. <laughs> that was a, was a very long day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost dark here, mm -hmm. and we had just two races. Uh, we waited on the water for uh, like uh, one hour and a half or a bit more, mm -hmm. and then a uh, little breeze filled in, mm -hmm. and we were able to, to do a couple of races. Cool. We had Italy in the lead the previous day in the FX, but a terrible day on the water. Two races in the FX for Germania and Batuzzi means the Italians still hold on to second place despite a really terrible day for them. But their loss was the gain for the Norwegians, Nason Ronigan, who are really coming on strong at the moment. So new leaders in the FX. And meanwhile, in the 49er, the Kiwis, Isaac McCarty, William McKenzie, closing in with a race win in one of their two races. Generally a good day for them, a better day than Bildstein and Hussel, the Austrians, but it's still the Austrians who lead overall in the 49er. Cool watching the, uh, the slow drift off that we have at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. We are absolutely stoked. 
we didn't imagine we could go it, to do it to the golf pit because we just uh, started sailing together a couple of weeks ago. Like we did some training in the past two years ago, but we stopped sailing for a, for a year. So really, really stuck with our performance this week and just enjoying sailing with the best of the world. Um, yeah, it looks like the breeze is sort of filling in quite nicely here. So I think the course looks pretty open. Um, it's just going to be very much about get a clear lane, sail the boat fast, and uh, yeah, get a good start and go from there. It's in the lead up to this regatta. We've been in Villamora a while now, and we've been practicing a lot of light winds and starting was our key areas. And I think as the regatta has gone on with the lighter winds, we've been getting progressively better, so our tra tra trajectory is pretty good. So I think we're just going to keep doing what we're doing, and hopefully the results will keep getting better and better. Uh, we came into the regatta with a bit of a goal to kind of trip away and um, see how long we could stay in contention with the front of the fleet and we've sort of been holding on to that so far. Um, it'll be, yeah, so the goal is to just continue to see how long we can hang on to it. Um, but yeah, it's a great experience and first time in gold fleets, so that's quite cool. It seems super great, but we, so we are expecting light breeze, something that we had in qualification, so we are working on a small, uh, small details how to improve the speed in, uh, in this light breeze because we, we don't expect that it's going to be until the, the last day. So that's our focus on it. Yeah, yeah the life is easy. If you have a goal, as Shiva said, uh, all the problems are smaller. So we try to reach our goals and all the focus is over there. So obviously we have uh, heavier days and uh, lighter days. But uh, at the end, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a joy to say. So this Belgian team right now is leading the, the, the race for the Olympics, for the slots that is available here in Villamora for the Olympic Games. We've been training here a lot, so we take that or experience from the waters here into account. But uh, yeah, we are continuously monitoring what's happening. And yeah. Then we decide what we want, but at this moment it's difficult to say. Did you bring enough Belgian chocolates to Villa Bona for us? <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> we had to uh, commit to uh, Portuguese chocolate, which is not as nice. <laughs> oh, so there you have it. Apparently, uh, Belgian chocolate is better than Portuguese chocolate. That was, I, I think Jan Hernik was within moments of being deported from the country before he redeemed himself with uh, his praise for the pastel donata, which Chris, I, I don't think it's one of your favorites, but the Pastel Donata is certainly one of mine. It's just an amazing dessert here in Portugal. Yeah, going going from zero to, you know, the four or five knots of boat speed that they're going to probably hit, you know, takes a big rock of the boat. And we learned from uh, the Japanese FX team yesterday, they got called for kinetics downwind. Kinetics meaning rocking the boat to put more apparent wind in your sails. They are 25 seconds to go. Poland 10 on the left of picture. Um, the helmsman, Dominic Buxak, giving that tiller a, uh, a really aggressive steer just to try and maintain position. And we're into the final 10 seconds. Now it's time to start accelerating and it's time to get some flow over the, the rudder and the centerboard. This is super skillful acceleration that needs to be applied right now. Coming off the end of the line here, Austria 29 with a nice start. Italy 23, also pretty good. And I can't yet identify this, but this is Schulte Heist and Burton, the, uh, the Maltese French team that have managed to win the pin end. The first boat is just about to go round and the Belgians are quite far back. And it looks like Isaac McCarty and Will McKenzie, the McKiwis, the are McKiwis. in the lead right now. So uh, great positioning by them they were actually not one of the furthest right boats so they the the kiwis have played a bit more of a, a race up the middle of the racetrack uh bilstein and Hussel coming in on the on the inside and france 95 who uh bilstein and Hussel just got them there are leaders of the fleet right now in this first gold fleet race okay so the the dutch have done a, a hoist they've tried to drop down below poland 10 on the right of picture it doesn't look like it's working terribly well for netherlands one they're, they're back up on the line of the polish with Italy 23, uh, that's uh, Ferraresi and Kiste, um, who are just behind them. Austria 
29. It looks like it is. So this is Bildstein and Hussle currently leading in the overall standards, standings. And they are going to uh, stretch their lead the way things are going if they can hold on to second place in this race right now. Bet you, uh, you know, uh, Peter Burling and Blair Tuke are watching this right now from down in New Zealand or wherever in the world that they are. And uh, I bet you they're really proud with what they left. So fantastic finish for Isaac McHardy and Will McKenzie squaring away race one. It's a bullet for the New Zealanders in the gold fleet. And here are our overall leaders wearing the, the bibs with the gold number ones on them. Well, number two in that race is good enough to keep Benjamin Bildstein and David Hussle from Austria in first place overall at the end of this race. This is gold fleet race one. And there we have it confirmed. Uh, New Zealand in first place, Austria in second, Ruel and Amaros from France in third, Buksak and Wisbiski from Poland in fourth, and Pretner and Flakberger from Austria in fifth. So a very good race for the Austrians. And a couple of days ago, actually, it was the Austrians holding second and third overall in, in the, uh, the overall standings before Pretner and Flakberger had a bit of a tumble in yesterday's uh, difficult two races. Four, three, two one and off they go this is the gradual wind up to full speed and it looks like a good start for croatia 83 for ireland 99 a nice start at this end and a couple of port tax starters underneath the fleet looking to get straight out to the right hand side we'll see how that works out if uh, these two boats were the ones that started on port tack underneath the fleet they really wanted the right hand side so maybe they even started on port tack to get straight out to the right hand side it is now uh, confirmed France round in the lead. Ruel and Amaros followed by Schultheis and Bertin, the Maltese Franco team, followed by Mullerus McDermott mm -hmm. from the USA. And then there's uh, the Irish team, Dixon and Wadilove. And look how congested it is yeah. coming round for the next three. Uh, what a massive gap between the top three and the fourth boat that's about to come round. That's Ferrarese and Kiste from Italy so it's hard to see anyone being able to overtake the top three right now whereas there's a bit of a battle now for the minor placings in the top ten lead look at that you grin yeah. <laughs> yes they, as that is number one they Correct. are stoked you <laughs> <laughs> So they started the day in 14th place. <laughs> High <laughs> five so for Lucas Ruel and Emil Amaros. We'll find out in a moment when the other rest of the fleet has finished where that has lifted them to. Starting the day in 14th place. Two great races for the French and a fantastic way for them to finish off today. Day four of the European Championships and that was race two of Gold Fleet. Uh, so first of all, we, we knew where we wanted to go. So on the right side. And I think we just managed to to show what we wanted to do and to be the first to go on the right side. So we were the first on the right side to uh, a nice start. And then uh, Lucas just uh, we, we just chose the right moment to tack. And then it was all about uh, trying to make the boat go fast and not uh, taking care about the boat just behind. So uh, from me, Andy Rice, and from Chris Musler, that's it for today from Villa Mora in the south of Portugal. Hope you've enjoyed today's competition. We'll be back to you tomorrow. We're going to be bringing you more action from these three Olympic classes, the 49er, the 49er FX, and the NACRA 17 Catamaran. So have a great day or evening wherever you are, and we will see you tomorrow here from sunny Villa Mora. wrap up on day five at the 2023 49er, 49er FX and NACRA 17 European Championships. We had to wait all day for a sea breeze, kind of like what we've been doing every day. In the NACRA, Gimson and Burnett from Great Britain had a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. That's unbelievable in that fleet, but it's still close in the top three. The top three group has an unassailable lead on the rest of the fleet and they're tied, uh, they're not tied, but they have about eight points between them. In the 49er Gold free Fleet, it's the tightest of margins with the French, Royal and Amaros. They have like four tenths of a point between them and second, the Polish team in second place. But the biggest story of the day were the FX women teams. The Bergman and Weil, they had a picket fence. They had three firsts in the FX fleet that moved them all the way back up from 15th to fourth place. So that fleet is super, super tight. And at the end of day five, the race for country qualification in the FX, it's still Italy on top of Germany. In the NACRA, it's still Austria. Austria actually clinched 
their spot for the Olympic Games in Paris at the end of day five. And still Ireland still holding on to that spot. So if they can hold on through this fleet race and the medal race, they're gonna clinch their spot for Paris 2024. Good afternoon and welcome to Villamora in the south of Portugal. Can you believe this is the Atlantic Ocean? It's so flat, but at least there is a little bit of wind for the NACRA 17s to get racing very shortly. Overall standings, there's a six point gap at the top between the two Italian teams. Gibson and Burnett from Great Britain, not such a great day yesterday. Uh, they scored a 14th. Uh, that dropped them down to third place and Paul Koloff and Alisa Stulema in fourth. There's only three spots on that line for about six boats at this committee boat end and there's some even on the, on the left hand side, uh, one of the French teams that's quite a long way back looking for that gap to open up at the last minute but it looks a little bit desperate for some of them still trying to find a place on the line. Line five seconds, four, three, two, one and off the Nacras go. We've got about four starting on Port Tack, looking to get straight out behind the fleet and out to the right hand side. And we saw one of the 49er men's races won by doing that just yesterday. So that is a that's a valid way to start these races. And Besson and Ancien are the next boat coming up. So the French team, Besson, uh, four-time world champion in the very early days of the Nacra, not had such a good run of it in recent months but this is a good race for Besson and Ancien from France going round in second. Here we are with Gibson and Burnett wearing the uh, the number three bibs. If they can win this race as they are at the moment that could get them past Tita and Banty because Tita and Banty look pretty deep going round that windward mark. Really smooth drive there by Gibson and Burnett. Here they are up again their ride height meaning their pitch keeping their boat high up above the water is really being controlled by Anna all the time walking forward when the boat gets too high pitching the boat down and then jumping back to keep the boat from nose diving pulling down against it getting the kite down now look how hard uh, Anna Burnett is having to work to get the Jenica back into the chute still re finishing off the maneuver as they go around Besson and Ancien also with a nice gap back to the next boats behind them so let's see how this drop goes. Leaving it very, very late. Still getting the Jenica in the chute as they go round. Again, leaving it very late on this rounding. France, 390, that's Shabu and Rigaud. Yeah, we're showing France in positions two, three, and four. They're really, they're really showing their thing today. Austria, 33, going round. That's Habel and Frank. That's the team that currently is sitting in pole position for earning a nation spot for Austria at the Paris 2024 Games. And that's, from, that's from the male and female crews. <laughs> Gibson just get, giving us a wave and a smile as they cross the finish line. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> well done, John. He, he can hear us. What's going on? We, I think it was a kind of a bit of a details day. We, you know, we had a nice start, midline, I guess. We've had plenty of free air and just, you know, did a nice job of sailing for that first maybe five minutes, which gave us just enough to cross. I think we still have three more races and we're a little behind. So say we're still five or ten points behind the Italians, so we need a few more of the same. <laughs> well, we're very pleased with today. You know, we've had a, quite a lot of wins this week, but also the odd 15 or 14, so it's nice to put a full day together. Tomorrow, I think we still have a couple of fleet races left, and it, as more you saw than, today, more than one. I think there's potentially two on the schedule. Okay. Um, so things and it could changes change. very quickly, so it yeah, does. we'll just keep chipping for a couple more and then look at the medal race after that. But it does. We just saw John Gibson and Anna Burnett from Great Britain win the first of their races this afternoon, but now we are going to get into the 49er FX racing. We've got, we had a change of uh, place yesterday. Helen Nace and Marie Ronigan managed to move into the top because Italy's Jana Germani and Giorgia Patuzzi did not have a great day, although they're still in second. Looks like a great start for USA7. That is Steph Robel and Maggie Shea. Absolutely fantastic start and a bit of a slow one 
for the Dutch. So not such a great start, despite the fact they won the pin. The, uh, the Dutch are going to have to put the bow down and uh, look for some clear air because the Americans really shot out of the gate very quickly there. Robel and Shea from America in the middle of our screen just tacking onto port so that frees up the space a little bit more for the Dutch on the far right of our picture. That's who we're looking at now, Adil van Anholt and Ed Dutz. They have the option to tack. Are they going to take it? Yes, they do. Annette Dutz goes round the front of the mast because it's light winds. They want to keep the bow down. That's the best trim for the boat in these conditions. And meanwhile, one of the German boats, I think that may be Bergman and Veal, Germany 55, who are doing very well out on this side of the race course as well. Bergman and Veal doing very well on this side of the race course. And uh, they are owning this side of the, the course at the moment. Bergman and Veal, one of the up and coming teams in the very young German squad. In the French, and these are the Germans. So it's the Germans who go round in first place ahead of Steyart and Picon. And look at the concentration. Picon, the former Olympic champion in windsurfing, applying all her fitness and skill to the front of the 49er FX. And Sarah Steyart at the back, the former laser radial single-handed racer, now racing very effectively with her friend and teammate Charlene Picon in second place going round. They went to the left-hand side of the racetrack. They made it work for them, and that's what's launched these young Germans into the lead. They were in 15th place at the start of the day, but the points are very close to get back into the top 10. They will be hoping that if they can hold on to this race win, this might be enough to get them close to nipping on the door of, uh, knocking on the door of the top 10 and maybe making tomorrow's medal race. Just going into a jibe drop, really, really hard work for Hannah Veal at the front of the boat, but a beautifully execute, executed jibe drop by Marla Bergman and Hannah Veal. So this is closer, this is oh. closer than it was at the lowered mark. Much closer, much closer. So actually that's been a good gain by the French and uh, we got a bit of a match race on now. So uh, the French are close enough uh, to be able to attack for the lead. Uh, but it's a well executed hoist by the young German team. What can the older uh, French team do not quite as good but not bad either and then uh, coming in for third place around the top mark for the final time it's Germani and Batuzzi second in this in the overall standings just ahead of our leaders in the overall standings that's the Norwegians so there's another little battle going on there and Germani and Batuzzi at the moment looking like they're going to take a, uh, a useful point out of the gap between them and the Norwegians if the finishes finish positions were to stay that way. We've got the Norwegian team who are currently winning the regatta. We don't we don't we have to double check those uh, results from the previous race, but Andy, we see that now only one person on the trapeze. It usually is the skipper. We're actually pretty happy about the day today. We managed to sail uh, consistently and uh, in front of the biggest pack, so uh, we're pretty happy mm. with that. Our plan was not to risk anything or, and just Tried to get a good start in free lines, and uh, I think we managed to do that almost every race except the <laughs> yeah. last one. But we managed to <laughs> keep up uh, the good lanes at least. Very happy. Um, our main goal was to do good Europeans and focusing on the medals, and try to we get a very the, good job. Yeah, but also uh, it's not official yet, but at least we won the um, internal kind of selection. But uh, I guess it won't be official until May. So. Um, Almost, yeah. Official. yeah. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> so Bergman and Veal, well, I, because we came into this late and we were talking about NACA racing earlier, I hadn't realized, I've just been told that uh, Bergman and Veal actually won the earlier race as well. So uh, winners of two races so far today, 
uh, followed by Stay Out and Picon from France. Nathan Ronigan still leading overall. They got third in that race. Germani and Batuzzi, I'm sure, holding on to second place overall with that fourth place finish. And Eshigoyen and Barcelo probably holding on to third overall because of their fifth in that race. Actually, I think we were quite nervous, both of us. Um, but our goal for today was just to keep it simple and to have a good start because that didn't quite work our way in the qualifying. <laughs> So we were just working on that and we're happy that it paid off that way. Right into the day it was really tight, so I think we jumped quite a bit, but we'll see. There's one more race to come today and probably one more tomorrow, so it's all open, I guess, still. And look, would you believe it? Well, would you believe it? it. <laughs> I'm not going to mention who has just gone round in the lead. You can say that, Chris Musler. Yeah. Uh, here they are coming into the gate. Uh, easy lead for them. Uh, they were a little bit high, but right on their transom is Italy 20, Germani and Bertuzzi. Beautiful mark rounding. It's such a mature move by the Germans because now what happens, instead of having a boat right behind them and a group right behind them, now they have a little bit of a gap and then that person that was right behind them is going to go slow with a big group of boats. So now they're just going to be able to extend their lead. Well, there we have it. Just about to execute their final tack of the race. And straight into, well, that's another reason why they tacked where they did. I didn't realize they were so high up on the ley line. So, so tacking aggressively on the Italians, they weren't actually being aggressive at all. So I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it looks like uh, middle left was still the, the best way to go up this race course. So the power Beautiful of the right. Set. Yeah, very, very good. And, you know, Germani and Batuzzi, they, they're certainly keeping themselves in the hunt definitely for the podium here is that moment can you believe it marla bergman hannah veal crossed the finish line for the third time today in the lead yeah. they have just enjoyed a perfect day on the atlantic ocean yeah. three wins from <laughs> three races in the gold fleet of the 49er fx european championship Just, <laughs> Hannah just lifts her glasses. She can't quite believe it's real. <laughs> I had the feeling that I was going to talk to you girls again, you know, with those smiles after the finish of the previous race. I, I Somehow I knew it. I followed your race. I saw a beautiful start from the committee boat and you nailed that ley line on the first beat. It was absolutely exactly spot on. Well done. Tell me what you felt and uh, how, how did you manage to, to put such a perfect uh, strategy on this race? Um, I think at the start, this time it was a bit more crowded at the boat end because people started to realize, okay, we want to start on the right side to have the control. And then we were a bit like, ah, do we start here? Like, do we take the risk or do we go a bit like lured off the boat? And then we're like, okay, no, we can do this. We're going to start at the boat end. And then we had quite a fight with the Italians, Italy 20, <laughs> for the perfect gap. And uh, I think we both met it quite well. We both had quite a good lane. And then from then it was just speed. Lovely. That's the spirit. <laughs> I, I want to see more of that tomorrow. So <laughs> now for sure you're doing a huge jump on the scoreboard. Yes. I mean, two no, bullets. No. Three. Uh, three bullets. Three yes. bullets. Oh, three bullets. <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't see the first race. There's three bullets. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Thank you. Thank nice you. job. What an amazing three bullet day they have enjoyed. There is confirmation of the first finishes across the line. I, before we raced the first race, we knew we had to race good to race well today. So we were really motivated and um, to like smash it today. So in the first race when we had the good start we knew we want to keep it simple keep good lanes and that's what we did and we just we were fast today so that, that, helped. Was, that <laughs> helped a lot and uh, the first race went over we weren't that nervous we finished first it was nice and then the second ring ca race came we had the same good start we got more nervous <laughs> and then in the third race it was a bit unbelievable so we were really nervous and full of adrenaline and just wanted to like 
fulfill the third bullet. We're just now like with the squad trying to qualify the nation, even though this is a like internal qualifier for Germany. But I mean, what do we have to qualify for if we don't have the spot yet for the Olympics? So that's the first goal at the moment. There's still one more day to go and we'll try to keep it up and fight for that gold medal. So yeah, that's our um, goal now. Those two already did their attacks and the Swiss have to build an attack into this, but it looks like the Croatians are smart. They're heading right below the mark to not let the Swiss Yeah, the Swiss are going to duck it, aren't they? Yeah, so they have to duck both. Yeah. Yeah, so good call by you, Chris. You called the Croatians. And see, now the Croatians just headed up. Uh, you know, they were heading below that mark just to shut the door on the Swiss. Round go the Fantella brothers in the lead of this race. They're going straight into a jibe set. You don't often see that with the leader going straight into a jibe set. So they obviously think the course axis has really skewed or they've seen a gust on the right hand side. And when the leader goes round, you often see others go straight into the jibe set as well, but no one else is buying that one. It's those French that won yesterday afternoon's race. Will they be able to beat the Fantellas and win another race in the late afternoon here in Villamora? Yeah. Uh, nice homing in here on the Fantella brothers. That's the helmsman Shime Fantella just looking around briefly before he gets back to focusing on the boat speed. He looked like he had a little smile on his face there too. I mean, they, these guys have a great attitude. I, and here they are coming in in the finish. So they're perfect. They just jived on Leyline to the committee boat. And what so, a fantastic race for them. I mean, two it, race it, wins today. The Fantellas win two out of the three races. Okay, they don't quite match the Germans in the 49er FX, but to get two race wins in those kind of fluky conditions, what an amazing performance by Shime and Miho Fantella. They're not even that small. <laughs> I mean, you know, these, these are big guys, so it's not a weight advantage or anything like that. And even for these guys, winning never gets old. It was a really good day behind us. We did uh, one ten and one. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we have a good speed in a uh, light breeze mm -hmm. and uh, the life is easier. Yeah, yeah, we are going 180 for Marseille, you know. We go 20 kilos more than everyone else. <laughs> 180. So we are working on it. So yesterday it didn't work, but today we died a bit before the day uh -huh. and uh, paid, paid, paid back. I don't know, the, the, the conditions over here are very different. Swell is uh, bigger and uh, back home we don't don't have a swell at all. Mm -hmm. So, but we we trained with here in Villamura in the past, uh, Lanzarote as well. So, I think we had some skills. Yeah, I mean, coming into this championship, uh, we didn't focus as it was for Hag because we we prioritized the season towards uh, Den Hag, Scheveningen. Mm -hmm. So we got a quota and we had some rest and some teams were coming here and train. So we missed a bit of this and you can see it in the results. I think the, the fleet is pretty competitive and pretty strong. And if you don't train properly, if you have a bigger break, you can feel it. And I feel that that's what we feel this week and obviously needed some time to get into it. So we are not um, fully focused at the results. Obviously, we are very competitive, so we want to do best and we are pissed when we are not good. But uh, looking at the big picture, Europeans were not our focus, but obviously we want to always do uh, the best we can. Today, uh, I think it was a lot about, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, the team managing, the team voting, the team uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, with Lucas during this regatta, we managed to be, it's important for us as regatta, and just managed to be very good together and just take the good calls and get fast. Uh, I think uh, now it's time to have a momentum and keep it. Uh, so we are on a good uh, path from the beginning of the regatta. So I'm looking tomorrow for uh, to to uh, to race against guys and show them uh, the Polish power. As soon as we will pack our boat, we focus on tomorrow because very important day uh, before us. So wrapping up the 2023 49er 49er FX and NACA 17 European Championships here in Villamona, Portugal. No win, no races today. So all the races stand. In the NACRA 17, we have Gibson and Burnett from Great Britain, who won the championship after yesterday's 1-2-1-1 scoreline. It was incredible. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, obviously, like you say, it's a bit anticlimactic, you know, not getting any racing today. Um, I think we would have enjoyed the test of having to race again today. It's always always nice to be challenging yourself on the final day. Um, but yeah, you know, winning the Europeans is, is awesome. We're really happy. Um, yeah, well, for sure, we're still always learning. I guess that's the beauty of the sport that we do is that there's always something to learn every day, every race. Um, and yeah, I think 
where we are in our, you know, in our in our partnership as a team, especially we have the ability now to be able to really um, debrief really well from races and kind of figure out quite quickly, I think ourselves, what we what we didn't quite get right and, and how to do that better. And I think that's kind of what we managed to do by the last day, by, by yesterday of this regatta. Um, and that's something, yeah, we need to keep keep pushing on with. We're kind of looking forward now into building up towards the games and starting to push some hours in the boat again and um, work on, yeah, what we what we feel we've been weak at this year. I mean, with the people that we train with, there's always a lot of intensity. <laughs> you can't shy away from the fact that uh, both the Italian teams are, are the fastest two teams in boiling conditions. Um, so, yeah, there's still a lot of speed for us to chase there. And, and you know, we'll keep pushing each other in, across the board in all the conditions. But, yeah, I don't think it's hard to find the motivation to keep pushing ourselves really hard because the end goal is, is you know, is an obvious one in, in Paris or in Marseille. So, yeah, we'll keep trying as hard as we can. And in the FX, we have Ness and Ronigan from Norway. They held on to their lead over the Italian pair. Very, very good. So we're just happy. Um, it's been nerve-wracking the whole week. Yeah, it's been our Olympic qualification and uh, yeah, lots going on. So um, it feels very good. And uh, I think the whole week's been out of breathing for me and Helena. Uh, we didn't admit it until yesterday that we haven't slept well and our hearts been beating the whole week. So uh, it's not just because we didn't race today, but it's just been the whole week. It's been very stressful for us. Um, a bit sad not to get some racing today. It would have been fun, but super happy to be a European champion. It doesn't really... <laughs> it's not, yeah, I'm not ready to hear yet. But, uh, soon, yeah. In the 49er, Rual and Amaros were so emotional today. They waited on the water all afternoon and still the crew was crying after racing. So that was fantastic. It shows how much it means to these sailors. And finally, a lot more was at stake. Country qualification for the Olympic Games. One place each class. In the NACRA, Austria's Haberl and Frank won their qualification for their country. And in the FX, Italy's Germania and Bertuzzi, even though they fell from leading this regatta for quite some time, they qualified Italy in the FX for Paris 2024. Yeah, we are really happy. That was the main goal for this event. Uh, we came really close to the first place, so we are also happy for that. Second place is uh, still a, a really great result for us for this ending season. Yeah, uh, the boat, uh, it's a really fast boat when there is wind, but it can be also slow when there is not so much wind. And uh, this was this week, it was really light. So we needed a lot of patience and a lot of uh, uh, smooth movements to get the boat going. Uh, through the light winds, so I think we did it quite good. We were disappointed in uh, in Den Haag, but uh, never lost hope. We immediately started training again, and I think it was the right decision. So yeah, yeah. we are here now. And how will the Italians celebrate tonight? Oh, we will go for some nice food and maybe some drinks. Okay, and Portugal has the second best food in the world, is that right? I don't know, no. we only care about Italian, <laughs> which is the first one, so... <laughs> but it's okay, here the food is uh, it's, it's good. So, it's passable, yeah. but yeah. then when you get home, you can have some, really celebrate with some proper food. Yeah. C <laughs> congratulations, Italy, you're now going to the Olympic Games. What a feeling. And in the 49er, Dixon and Wadilla from Ireland had a huge contingent here. They sprayed champagne all over each other. They qualified Ireland for 49er in the 2024 Olympic Games. So that's all from here in Villamora, Portugal. We'll see you next spring. Yeah, it's great. Like we've, um, yeah, so Ireland's qualified for the Olympics. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's like kind of the main objective ticked off for the year. And uh, we can go into next year uh, fully ready to focus on the games. So you have the, your, your stock of Guinness is getting ready for us tonight. <laughs> we'll bring some out with us for you, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks guys. Yeah, just to say that it has been a long waiting, that's what makes it very difficult emotionally. And we are European champion today. And I mean, we worked a lot for this and we are very proud to, to have this. And just want to thank the family, friends and sponsors in the Federation. <laughs> Sorry.
<laughs> so that's it. Very proud of it and just want to go further and continue this. Really, thanks a lot. Bravo. <laughs> and bravo, look at this. Well, we look I think we actually wanted a race because we felt that we are in good shape and we have a good chance of winning a gold medal here. But uh, we didn't say it anyway. We are, I think, very, very happy because uh, silver medal uh, is a great achievement and we are super happy. And so now it's time for celebrations. Uh, we're going to get ready for the prize giving and a good party tonight. Are you going to have a good party tonight with everyone? Yeah, for sure. The event, as Dominic said, was important for us because it's our path to the Olympics. So we probably we celebrate a lot today and next day we'll focus on the next, next year. Actually, I'm traveling tomorrow to Lanzarote to bring our staff there. So yeah, a few days of celebrating and then focus on the next event. I would say horrible and we're just so ready to go on the race and uh, once we saw the AP on A it was like a uh, deliverance you know so <laughs> we just saw this and and uh, yeah. C'est la même chose le, le fait de, de gagner le championnat d'Europe euh, qu'on gagne avec 10 points ou avec 0,4 points franchement c'est incroyable on est champion d'Europe senior c'est inimaginable franchement c'est génial. Uh, being a 0.4 lead or 10 points lead doesn't change much for us because uh, it's a high, high level sport and always play on very small details and we just managed to be European champion and together with Lucas and I am we are very proud of our team and we just wanted to show right now today that we're able to do this result so we're very proud of it. Yeah, yeah well, absolutely over the moon. Yeah, as you said, like that was our uh, main goal throughout the whole year and we've been doing a lot of work in the light winds was probably our weakest area and to see it all paying off really nicely is, is just great to end the year on such a high. To, to be able to get this result in a light air regatta is just huge for us. It's really important and uh, yeah, we're just delighted to get the nation spot. So, yeah. I guess um, we're going to do one more block here in Villamore, just get as much light winds as we can and then We'll head to Lanzarote in the new year and just kind of build up for the World Championships then and hopefully pull another good result out of the bag. Even my parents are out here and everything, uh, so yeah, so many support staff and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how many people, so many, too many to thank, so yeah, all of the guys here supported us the whole way. Sure, we are really happy and really proud of the work that we have done in this month to improve with light wind and uh, I mean, uh, we did it, mm -hmm. the results are done. I'm really happy for the British, they are so fast with, uh, um, with this condition. So, and I mean, I'm really happy to have uh, this partner and uh, even uh, for Gigi Maria, our uh, teammates. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let's go. It's a play, it's a sport. And we have always to respect the value of sport and Olympism. So, in the water and while racing, everyone is a competitor, but always in a fair play.